Hello everyone. Um, I just want to first off say thank you so much for coming to this code day. Um, you know, it's really awesome that like so many of you are here. Um, it was super fun to like organize and I love seeing you all just like having a good time this weekend. Um, just thank you so much for attending. It's time for presentations now. Um, so can we get some hype in the chat? I, I, uh, I should probably get my uh, window open with Twitch chat. That might help to see if it's actual hype. But I know you. I know. I know this chat. There's, there's bound to be hype. So. Yeah, that's a lot of hype. Nice. It looks, it looks like everybody's excited for presentations. Yeah. I take it you are. So first off, before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. Uh, we have our global partner Splunk, who sponsored CodeCup. Our global partner Lexus Nexus Risk Solutions, uh, that sponsored the Big Data Challenge. Our global partner SAP, and our global partner Uber. Thank you very much to those sponsors. Additionally, we have uh, smaller sponsors that are just as important to us. Um, you can see those here. Um, thank you so much to all of our sponsors. It is, you know, super, super incredible to have, you know, sponsor support make this event possible, as well as, you know, the volunteers and, you know, staff members and the community that makes this happen. So what's next? You know, what happens? It's code day. It's no longer code day. You know, what is there to do now? It might feel like your life is kind of over. That is an understandable feeling because, you know, what's really the point if you don't get to go to a code day? Luckily, this isn't the only code day. So there are three code days a year um, held virtually currently because of COVID. And the code day Discord is available year round, um, including we just recently opened up a system to announce job opportunities. So our partners who have like internships or something available will um, you know, let us know and then we will post that job and then um, members of the community are encouraged to, you know, do some research and look into applying that. Um, HPCC and Lexus Nexus Rick, Rick, huh, Lexus Nexus, Lexus Nexus Rick, Risk Solutions are having, they have an internship um, that they are offering and um, there's an info session that is going to be on December 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, there's some more information on that on the Code Day website. Um, the next Code Day is on February 26th. Uh, registrations, I'm not 100% sure if they're open now. They will be open um, very soon. Um, I will post a message and announcements in Discord when they are, when the, when they are open. But I uh, highly encourage you to come to that event. Uh, come to that Code Day, February 26th, Code Day Winter. Um, going to be held virtually. Um, it's going to be a lot like this one uh, if you liked it, but also if you didn't like this one, we'll be making some changes. So it's uh, worth to come to no matter what. Um, so yeah, February 26th is going to be our next virtual code day. So please mark your calendars. It's going to be another weekend log one. Um, it's So it's just that uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And additionally, if you're interested in planning code day, there is a lot of work that happens behind the scenes to you know, make this weekend happen. For this event, we have been coordinating this since August. Um, and you know, the second that uh, we're done here, it's uh, just boot right back into planning for the next code day mode. So, um, and the great part about that is anybody can help us with that. If you had a good time this weekend and you want to volunteer, um, there's a form you can fill out and virtual.codeday.org slash volunteer. Um, and then I will get in touch with you and figure out, you know, something for you to do as a volunteer. There really aren't, you know, too many like prerequisites other than like just be excited about Code Day and want to, uh, you know, give students like uh, opportunities, you know, the same like the opportunities you got this weekend. So if you're interested, virtual.codeday.org slash volunteer. Um, it would be awesome to have you. Um, I would really love to, you know, work with you in addition to seeing you at the next code day. 
So without any further ado, um, we're about to get into presentations, but um, before we do that, I'm just going to go over the judging criteria as a refresher. So the most important thing that we are judging on is if you pushed yourself and tried something new. Um, that is, you know, far and away the most important and, you know, most heavily weighted aspect of the judging. It's if you pushed yourself. And, you know, so like if it was a difficult project for somebody at your skill level and somebody at your team's skill level, um, you know, that's really what um, made us inclined to give a, you know, give an award. So difficulty comes first and then creativity and fun comes second. So, um, you know, for that, we're looking at, you know, did you, you know, really just like have a good time and did you, you know, have like a unique idea um, and, you know, did that. And then also this is where, you know, if we have any bonus points for use of theme, which are minimal, um, that's where those are applied as well. And then finally, accounting for just like a tiny amount of the score is the polish of the projects. So we have um, a few categories. We have best in show which and then we have best in class for game and then best in class app electronics as well as a few special judges awards and the community choice award so without any further ado i'm going to introduce charlie Liu, a volunteer uh who coordinated judging and team support but uh, before we get started, can we get a huge round of applause and thank you to Charlie for all of the hard work he did this weekend, um, making sure that your mentors were, you know, assigned properly and that you had a mentor and that mentors were also, you know, had active teams. So let's get a huge round of applause, huge shout out to Charlie. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, we really appreciate the work you've, you know, it's been awesome having you uh, to, here to help out this weekend. Thank you so much, Lola. All right, so without further ado, would you like to have me get started on announcing the awards? That would be awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, so the first award is that we're gonna be announcing is Best in Class Game. Do you wanna talk a little bit about that award? Sure thing. So the judges, when they were reviewing the winning team for this award. They were really impressed by the custom graphics, especially the custom game characters that they designed for their game, and they were also impressed by the multi-level design. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to announce the Best in Class Game Award goes to Cyber Gunslinger.
All right. Thank you very much, Team Cyber Gunslinger. Our next award is Best in Class App Electronics. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that award, Charlie? Of course. So for this project, the judges were really impressed by the fact that this was one of the team's first times using Electron and Node.js. They really liked the concept of the app. And in fact, some of the judges said that they would love to use this app by themselves when it was complete. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to introduce the Best in Class App Award to Multipad. So you just installed a new program and you need to edit the configuration file. You don't want to use Notepad because it doesn't have features like auto indentation or syntax highlighting. But you also don't want to use a full on IDE like VS Code because it's way more complicated than you need. It works better for like working on entire projects. This is where Multipad comes in. Right now I don't have any file open so I'm going to open that configuration file I need to edit. Now I can edit the file with syntax highlighting, auto indentation, and a bunch of other features. So now that I've edited that file, I want to edit a markdown file, file so I can open that too. And now the editor transforms into a specialized markdown editor. This is the distinguishing feature of Multipad. It has a module architecture, which allows it to have a wide range of different editors that it switches back and forth between based on the file type. If I want, I can switch back to the regular code editor too. And in the sidebar, it shows me that the recommended module is marked down because it's a markdown file, but I can also use a code editor, and it does not recommend that I use an image. And as an example of this module system that I've made, uh, I can, I've made a module that can just view images. I can demonstrate that by opening up one of those images I used before. And it just shows the image. And if I look in the sidebar, I can see that it's changed the recommendations. Um, right now it recommends that I use an image, but it does not recommend that I use code or markdown because that would result in this, which is not really useful. But it gives me the option to do that if I want. In the future, I plan to continue working on Multipad and adding more modules like a PDF reader. If you want to try Multipad out for yourself or contribute your own modules, the code is open source and I happily accept pull requests or issues. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Team Multipad. Do you want to talk a little bit about the next Best in Show award, Charlie? Of course. So, as you all know, the Best in Show Award is given to the best project out of the entire event. We take this award very seriously, and we want to make sure that the winner uh, produces a project that is creative, uh, is technically challenging, and of course, originally designed by themselves. Uh, we've carefully vetted all of the potential candidates for this, and after discussing with the judges about this, uh, they decided that they really liked the game mechanics of this project, they really liked the custom sound effects that they put the time into this, and they also liked the lighting effects that they came up with uh, within the game. So without further ado, I would like to announce the Best in Show Award for Cyberdash Team Winners. Oh, my God. 
Thank you so much, and congratulations, Team Cyberdash. Uh, next up, we have the choices from the judges, um, the special awards. Um, so these are special awards awarded by the judges for good effort, or, or like, you know, things that, uh, you know, kind of like honorable mentions. I'll let Charlie talk about this, because I think Charlie is, is significantly more awake than I am at this moment. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty tired, too. Uh, we have a lot of fun at Code Day. Um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit more about these special awards. So the judges were really impressed by all the projects, truly. Um, the deliberation call actually took a little bit longer than an hour this time because there were just so many awesome projects that they wanted to recognize. So that's why we have some of these special prizes. Um, Lola, is there a specific one you'd like me to get started with? Uh, yeah, the uh, first special prize is most likely to use. Sure thing. So for this project, the judges looked at this app and were really impressed by the purpose and the concept of it. Uh, it was designed to help save people's lives uh, when in danger of a wildfire or natural disasters. And on top of that, it was this uh, team's first time using Swift. Uh, so they wanted to recognize this by awarding them the special prize most likely to use uh, given to Team MetroSafe. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations, Team MetroSafe. Our next special prize is the 0 to 60 award. Do you want to talk a little bit about this, Charlie? Of course. So the special prize 0 to 60 award is given to the team that demonstrates the most persistence and determination and challenge themselves to learn something new at Code Day, which is exactly what Code Day is about. Uh, and in terms of this specific project, um, the team members mentioned that this was their first time working on a major project. The judges really loved the game idea, and, you know, in fact, this game was created just in time for the holiday season. Uh, so I would love to award the special prize 0-60 to 60 award to Save Santa. Merry Christmas. Boo. It's Jack Frost. And the Grinch. Oh no. Help me. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Hey, Santa. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black beard. You're a monster, Mr. Thank you, Grinch. Jolly One. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Your brain is full of spiders. 
Save Santa. I really like the sound effects in that one. Yeah, and the dancing Santa, too. Yeah. All right. Congratulations, Team Save Santa. Um, our next special prize is the Spirit of Code Day Award. Do you want to talk a little bit about this award and the project that won? Yeah, so the Spear of Code Day Award is given to the team that best exemplifies Code Day. Uh, literally, the Spear of Code Day. Uh, so we're looking for teams that are actively engaged in the community, they're never afraid to ask questions, and they're also never afraid to provide help to others if they need it. Um, for this specific project, the judges were really impressed by the fact that this team uh, consisted of complete beginners, yet they were able to create a, a functioning game by the end of the event. They were never afraid to ask for help, and they overcame several challenges, such as uh, getting over the events limit in Construct. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to give the special prize Spear of Code Day Award to the office. Thank you very much. That was actually my first time seeing that presentation. I really enjoyed that. All right, our next special award is the Judges Favorite Dystopia Award. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? Of course. So in line with our theme for the event, For the Future, the judges were really impressed by the storyline of this project. Uh, it follows the story of a broken robot in 2094, and the judges were also really impressed by this game's custom graphics. And on top of that, it was one of their first ever hackathons as a team. So without further ado, I'd love to award the special prize judges favorite dystopia award to file a lost message. Congratulations. Um, this is actually a live presentation. Uh, so please hold on for just a moment while we uh, get that. Um, they'll be joining the channel in a moment.
Hello. So will our project feature a gameplay consisting of two main aspects, puzzle design and platforming? You play as an awakened robot in the late 30th century, but the memory drive has been corrupted. So as you trans traverse the landscape and platforming, the earth is abandoned and barren. And throughout your journey, you reach multiple broken robots who need to be fixed. Thankfully, we can complete mirror puzzles to extract the message they hold. Each level expands on the story, which you can read after each puzzle in the top left. And as we keep going, we slowly piece together the narrative okay, so, that humanity uh, is in space and you were tasked to fix it. Although we didn't manage to completely flesh out our game with stuff like colored lights, prisms, and platforming enemies, we're pretty happy with our work. Thank you so much. Uh, it took me a second to get the uh, video playing, so we've got about another minute. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, we have about another minute of the video left if you want to say anything more. Oh, yeah, sure. So, as you can see at the top left, we have the console created. Most of the stuff was made by pixel art by our artists and the team. Basically, each level comprised of getting to the next robot and completing the puzzle. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. All right. So congratulations on uh, winning the judge's favorite dystopia award. Um, our next award is the Journal of Computer Science Award. Do you want to talk a little bit about this award, Charlie? Of course. So this award was given out to the team that utilized uh, a really impressive amount of technical knowledge to complete the project. Uh, and the judges, uh, like I said earlier, were really impressed by the specialized technical expertise and the time that this team spent on researching and developing their project. So without further ado, I'd love to award the Special Prize Journal of Computer Science Award to GPGPU CUDA Brute Forcing. All right, congratulations. And uh, this is also another live presentation. Okay, uh, I just want to add a caveat that I didn't come close to finishing, but I did get code working, so I guess that counts for something. Okay. Uh, my project was uh, an effort to uh, create a brute forcing algorithm to create puzzles by first creating a list of a bunch of puzzles uh, and that part's not too hard, but then uh, for each one of those generated puzzles, solving it in parallel on a GPU, and then uh, after it's solved, or so that consists of making a tree and then going down the tree, and then after it's solved, they all get sent back to the CPU, and the CPU determines the best one. So right now, I believe you can see that game uh, which is a sliding puzzle. And so you move a character around and the character can grab blocks and move them around. If you go on a square uh, with a circle in it, you can go inside blocks. And then you want to get to the flag. Uh, the colors of the squares let you go between the color of the block and the color of the square. And so you have to, on at least this particular level, first go on to the red square, then from the red square, go on to the red, go to the red block through the gray square, then go to the orange block with the red square, then go to the uh, yellow block with the orange square, and then go to the green block with the yellow square and the blue block with the green square, and then the flag. And you have to arrange all the blocks so that you can do that. Uh, so it's not easy. It takes uh, I brute forced this particular puzzle before Code Day started, and it takes 101 moves if you do it perfectly. 
And just to, again, I didn't program any of this game during Code Day. I started this one like a year ago, and I've been every now and then working on it throughout the year. All I worked on for Code Day was the CUDA code uh, to try and generate puzzles. Uh, so this is another level. You go to the orange block, then the yellow block, and then the finish. A little easier. Uh, uh, this one, I used a brute force search but to make. And I made the G shape and the blocks. And then I only looked for the squares. Uh, so most of my time trying to research this was uh, spent looking at the CUDA toolkit documentation uh, since I had never used CUDA before. And the documentation is kind of dense, and it's for GPU programming and parallel programming, which I have very little, if any, experience with. Uh, so trying to figure out how the GPU worked and how you transfer information from the CPU to the GPU and having the parallel processes running simultaneously without having a bottleneck is very confusing and difficult. Uh, and my code doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, I just got the start of it. Uh, so here's what I plan to do. The host defines the problem. So if I wanted to find the hardest 3 by 3 puzzle, and ideally I'd have this so that I could define any problem. Uh, so I could even make this so that it works for other puzzles if I rewrote it a bit. So maybe Sudoku or something, but it would require a bit of a rewrite, but I'd have the knowledge after I finish this, which is what I wanted to get out of this project. Uh, so after the problem's defined, I send all of the puzzles to the GPU, and each parallel process tries to solve it. Uh, the device further splits each puzzle into the processes. And on the right of that image, which is kind of small, there's a tree. And so uh, going from the top down, uh, there's the, every possible state of the puzzle. And so each row is computed in parallel. And then there's a bunch of those also being computed in parallel. So say like a few dozen uh, trees are being computed at the same time. And then in each one of those, uh, whole row of the puzzles being solved. And that's only a three by three puzzle. The tree for a five by five puzzle contains around two million nodes, just uh, a ton of nodes. Uh, so it takes a long time to brute force all the way down to find a solution, uh, especially if you're doing it on a CPU uh, in a linear fashion instead of parallel. Uh, on the GPU, the blocks have, uh, I believe it's 1,024 uh, threads that per block, and then you've got a few blocks. So my idea was that each block would have one puzzle being solved. Uh, the output of my current code is just, uh, I input a bitmap. So in this case, you can see on the right, there's the outline of an A, and then I take the bitmap and divide it uh, into the regions that are isolated. So there you can see the one, two, three, and four regions that make up the A shape. And then that uh, can be uh, divided into all the permutations of those shapes uh, divisions. So the one, two, and three are one by one. So there's only one permutation and then the fours, there can be tons of permutations. And that's really all I got as far as the programming part. Thank you so much. Um, do you maybe, and I, I, you might not have the, uh, you know, it might not be in a, in a state where you could give this yet, but I'm kind of curious what the uh, performance increase looks like. Do you have any idea on that? Uh, since I don't have it working, I couldn't say because I haven't been able to actually run a test, but my guesses are that it would be at least like a thousand times 
performance increase, but that's just a rough guess. Okay. And it was taking like three hours to make the G, so divide three hours by a thousand to make that G. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. All right. Um, Our next award is the Community Choice Award. Um, And fun fact about this icon is this was designed by like you the community so you know it's your award you got to choose what it looks like so uh, we're going to take a quick break because the uh, winner when I checked the results of the community choice award uh, changed um, and so we're oh okay I have received an update we know the winner of the community choice award Um, so can we get a huge drum roll in the chat for the community choice award please Awesome. So, Charlie, do you want to talk about this project? Of course. So, as you know, this award was given by the community based on your votes. It was a very close vote as we were checking the results throughout the day. Uh, The first place winner kept on changing constantly. Um, But I'm proud to announce that we have a clear winner. Uh, With 28 votes and an overall rating of 86%, Uh, I would like to give the Community Choice Award to Team Lost and Found. Congratulations. And actually don't have the link ready for this one, so we'll need to uh, get it up live. All right. Okay, so congratulations, Team Lost and Found. I'm going to play your presentation. Hi, so this is my prototype for Lost and Found. I've recorded this for like five times, and it's always been over two minutes, so I'm going to speed through this. So you can enter the app and you can either choose to sign in or sign up, it doesn't really matter. And since this is Figma, you can't really have text frame or yeah, text input, so I can just click sign up. And here's the homepage, there's three parts, there's a recent lost items, so you can just scroll through. There's a message board for students to talk and um, notify students that they lost an item and a list of all of other items. So if you click on one of the reported items you can look at the description and get more information on it and if you want to claim it you can click claim and you can see um, who reported it and their contact information and you can also message them and if you hit send it'll just send you back to home you can also add your own item um, but yeah same thing you can report um, and for the message board you can see click see more and um, contact or see all the message threads I guess it's kind of like a forum you can click on the most recent one and you can see the message and you can also reply to them and see the replies, etc. So if I go back and scroll all the way down, you can see the all items part and you can say, do the same thing. You can also see an extended version of it and filter and search responses. And you can also click the sidebar, it'll open up to a profile. You can see your um, basic information as well as all the claims that you have. And you can click see claims and see all the reported items, claimed items, etc. And if you don't have any items, it'll just redirect you here. And I also prototyped this in Bravo Studio, but um, when I screen recorded there, I'm not sure if it'll sync in time with my desktop, but yeah, um, I'll link this Figma file in my um, showcase profile if I can. But yeah, thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, and congratulations on winning the first ever Code Day Community Choice Award. Um, it's a huge honor. Um, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who came to Code Day once again. Um, this was an incredible Code Day. It was so awesome to you know have so many new faces here. Um, I really, really liked the level of student engagement that we had. So thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you have a great, you know, rest of your weekend, the, you know, few hours of it that are left. Um, if you want to check out the projects, they will be available permanently on showcase.codeday.org. Um, as well as, uh, just a reminder, we have another virtual code day coming up. Um, as well as, you know, please, uh, 
if you if you like this weekend um please come to that one um and the discord remains you know year round um if you want to come hang out with our community so is there anything else to add that you would like to add charlie um, no, I just like to reiterate that we had so many amazing projects. Um, if we could give out an award to everyone, we really would have this time. Uh, and you know, congratulations to everyone. Um, well done on getting through the event, and we can't wait to see you guys next time. Yep. And I actually, I uh, I missed one thank you. I want to say a thank you to all of the volunteers this weekend, um, whether you were a mentor or a judge or both. Or if you helped us in a, you know, organize before the event, or if you were hanging out in the Discord and making sure students were, you know, um, having their questions answered and, uh, you know, being a point of contact for Code Day. Thank you so much to all of our volunteers. Um, your work is so appreciated. I can't even uh, tell you um, just how incredibly grateful I am to have all of you, um, you know, as part of this community. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, now go get some sleep. Love.